I will ruin you! Say goodnight! Big mistake! I promise this will hurt. Yeah! Troglodyte! Greetings, ladies and gentlemen! My name is Mengs, and today I welcome you lovely viewers to yet another Fire Emblem Character Spotlight. It's time to wash our hands, slip into our finery, and practice our etiquette. For today, we are taking a glance at some fine nobility with the young, lovely Maribel. Stay focused. Pay attention. Maribel is the daughter of the Duke of House Themis, a very influential, rich and powerful house among the Elysian nobility. She grew up surrounded by other nobles and servants, shielded by the rigors of the outside world. Despite being well protected by her wealth and status, Maribel had a very rough upbringing and a very poor social life. She initially had no friends, as most of her noble peers viewed her as weird and bizarre, and many of them took to cruelly mocking her and spreading false rumors to shame her. There was only a single person who treated her with any sort of kindness, and that was the Princess of Elise, Lisa. And as a result, the two became close friends. Grateful for finally being accepted for who she was, Maribel decided to treasure their friendship above anything else in the world. Some years prior to the events of Awakening, a thief broke into Maribel's family mansion in an attempt to steal from the Elysian treasury, but was caught before he could get away. The name of this thief was Gaius. Guess who? However, in an unfortunate turn of events, Gaius would, upon his capture, accuse Maribel's father of a crime, and this was strangely enough to bring the old nobleman to trial, and almost had him executed, before he was strangely pardoned. In reality, Gaius was actually blackmailed into pressing these charges against Maribel's father by another noble house, and if he did not comply, they threatened to assassinate Maribel. Feeling horrible about what he had done, Gaius had secretly sent a letter to the judges after the trial, explaining that Maribel's father was innocent, thus sparing his life. Maribel was never aware of neither the blackmailing or the letter, so she went on blaming and hating Gaius for the whole ordeal. Lowborn filth. Maribel would later join the band of soldiers known as the Shepherds, led by Prince Crom of Elise, most probably so she could stay close to her dear friend Lissa, who was also part of the organization. However, as Crom was headed to Regna Ferox to make an alliance with the Barbarians, Maribel was kidnapped by Plagian spies and smuggled across the border. This was a ploy by the King of Plagia himself, the Mad King Gangrel and his dark mistress Aversa, who framed Maribel as a spy from Elise, stating that she crossed the border without their consents. This was of course a ruse to draw Crom and Emerin out of the capital, which worked. When the Shepherds arrived in force, Gangrel demanded the Fire Emblem as payment for Maribel's crimes. When Crom refused Gangrel's terms, the Mad King ordered his executioner to kill Maribel. But before the executioner could even lift his axe, the young mage Rickon, who was initially ordered to be left at home at the Shepherd's garrison due to his young age and inexperience, had managed to sneak up close to Maribel in the chaos, and blasted the executioner with his magic, freeing Maribel from his grasp. Aversa, who was nearby, attempted to intervene, but Rickon sent a blast of wind magic towards her as well, briefly stunning her and allowing Maribel to run away. While behind enemy lines and surrounded by Plagian soldiers, the two of them still managed to escape and make it safely over to Crom's shepherds. My humble thanks. Back with her allies, Maribel helped Crom and his soldiers rout the Plagian force. This later led Gangrel to declare war on Elise, triggering the chain of events that would lead to many devastating conflicts. In a way, Maribel was indirectly one of the people responsible for the events of Awakening, though one could argue that Gangrel would have found other ways to start the war. So sorry! Maribel would accompany Crom and his shepherds through all of these conflicts, never once leaving Lissa's side. After the events of Awakening, Maribel returned home to her village of Themis and became a magistrate. With the experience she gained from the war, she decided that her mission in life would be to strive for the law being applied equally to both nobles and commoners alike. Maribel is a young woman somewhere in her mid-teens. She has very pale white skin, dark pink eyes, and long blonde hair that she curls into ringlets. She wears a pink vest along with dark pink riding pants, high boots, and wears white silken gloves. She is also depicted holding a parasol, which is a curious thing for someone to bring with them to a battlefield. She is often seen with a dour expression on her face, signaling her lack of respect for those around her. Look at this weakling! 
Maribel comes off as an extremely pompous, arrogant, and naive noblewoman. Many parallels can be drawn to Binding Blade's Chlorine, as they are similar in both appearance and personality. She visibly shows her lack of experience with the outside world, as she often refers to commoners with cruel descriptions, such as stating they are smelly and weird, clearly thinking they are worth less than those of high nobility. It would appear that her harsh upbringing among nobles had led her to really enforce the pursuit of nobility and etiquette, rather than shy away from it, most likely in an attempt to be accepted among her peers, who shunned her as a child for her weird and bizarre our personality. Maribel enjoys tea and is very concerned with fashion. She also likes playing chess and other games. She is shown to have a sharp mind and an even sharper tongue, often hurling well-worded insults at her conversation partner. She thinks that a person's choice of words reflects their state of mind, and that people who talk too casually lack respect for others. This is of course quite contradictionary and hypocritical, as Maribel has perhaps the finest speech out of anyone in Chrome's army, yet easily acts the most disrespectful towards new people she meets. Maribel is very concerned with the prospects of order versus chaos, and feels that order constantly needs to be maintained. She is extremely rigorous when it comes to the law, openly chastising Gregor in a support conversation for merely taking a loaf of bread from the food supply outside of his rations, stating that just a single crack is all that it takes to bring down the dam of chaos. This behavior makes sense anyway, as a young Maribel was witness to her father going from rich influential nobleman in one moment to being dragged before the court as a criminal in another. As a mother, Maribel is shown to be very strict with her son Brady, who doesn't view nobility with the same regard, shying away from it and openly talking like a commoner, something which causes her a lot of distress. Maribel repeatedly tries to force Brady to learn proper etiquette to no avail, but in a support conversation she does discover that he has taken to reading a book about proper speech in order to surprise her, though she also discovered that it's a book for children, and expresses a lot of worry over Brady struggling with such a simple piece of literature. Maribel is a quite interesting character, because she is one of the few members of Awakening's cast who actually undergoes character development. She starts out as a pompous, spoiled noblewoman who thinks the common folk are worth nothing, but later grows to become a magistrate fighting for equality, striving towards the law being applied equally to everyone, despite their social status. We'll do it together. Maribel is first seen in Chapter 2, but doesn't join later until Chapter 5, where she starts out alongside Rickon as a playable unit, but far away from the rest of your army, and surrounded by enemies. You need to place her in a very specific spot away from the enemy's range in order to save her, and you can either use a rescue staff or send a flyer over the mountains to accomplish this goal. Maribel is the second healer to join your party alongside Liza. Being a troubadour, she has the advantage of mobility, though most of her stats are lower, and at this point you've had plenty of chapters to level Liza, whilst Maribel joins you pretty underleveled. Even on normal difficulty, most of the enemies from here on out will kill her in a single hit, forcing you to be extremely careful with her positioning. Still, since she is a healer, she doesn't need to see actual combat to gain experience, so just spam the shit out of the men's staff, and she'll catch up to the rest of your army in no time. Stat-wise, Maribel has a very strong magic, luck, and resistance. Her speed is neither bad nor good by Awakening standards, but she might become a rather decent dodge tank at later levels if you don't get completely RNG screwed. Her hit points and defense, on the other hand, are both abysmal, so unless you can ramp up her avoid with terrain and support bonuses, you should keep her far away from the enemy's range. Maribel has a very strong component to her class kit that is very important to point out. She has the ability to become a Dark Flyer, which means she is able to get the much coveted Gale Force skill, which makes certain Awakening characters very viable. Not only is this important for her own sake, but it allows her to pass it down to her children, most notably to Lucina or Morgan if she marries Crom or Robin, which is definitely recommended. While it requires you to grind a lot, it might be necessary if you plan on taking on some of the more challenging DLC maps in the end game. Speaking of children, after obtaining an S-rank support with any male member of Chrome's army, which can include Chrome himself, Maribel will become the mother of Brady, a priest. Brady is a unique character that can fill many different roles, and doesn't necessarily have to be delegated to becoming a healer like his mother, especially not if he gets the coveted Gale Force skill. But as with most of the Awakening children, he will have higher stats on average compared to his mother, and be a better unit in general. 
Overall, Maribel is a very versatile unit that will be very important to you early on when your access to staff wielders is limited. You can either use her as a heal bot and discard her later when more valuable staff users come along, or stick with her and watch her grow into a very competent staff and tome user. Just take good care of this delicate little flower and she should hopefully serve you well. Just be careful that you don't end up serving her instead, you worthless commoner. Is that all, troglodyte? Thank you for watching this character spotlight. If you enjoyed it, give it a like and a comment. It really helps out the channel a lot. If there is a character you want to see featured in a future spotlight, let me know about it in the comment section below. I want to give a shout out to my designer, Mina Tangerina, for designing the visuals of the spotlight, as well as my two script editors, Nasiro and Sunagi, who helped me with editing the scripts for the spotlights. Until next time, my name is Mengs, and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye!